This quote is from a respectable scientist, in fact, one of the founders of this field, that may be a little bit, may look a little strange to you who don't follow theoretical physics, but there is a very clear prediction that our most successful theory of nature makes, and that is that there are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to this session or not. Quantum mechanics makes a very specific prediction that all of those are as real as the thing that you remember. And this is bizarre, because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. And quantum computers are perhaps the most exciting of all of these that we have within, or almost within our grasp right now. So these types of computers now are being thought of in the same way. They're not terrifically powerful yet, but they're doing something completely different than what your computer does. And that thing is like flight. It gives these computers access to these new resources, maybe you could call them parallel universes, in order to do something that you couldn't otherwise do. From the outside, they look like giant black monoliths, big metal boxes, about 10 feet on a side, 12 feet tall. And they are powered, they have a fridge inside them, a refrigerator that cools these chips to almost absolute zero. Just a wisp, a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. Hundreds of times colder than interstellar space. Amongst the coldest and most isolated and extreme conditions that humans have ever been able to engineer. These fridges, interestingly enough, which are called pulse tube dilution refrigerators, have a thing called a pulse tube, which emits a sound roughly once per second, which sounds eerily like a heartbeat. So if you're you have the opportunity to stand next to one of these machines, it is an awe-inspiring thing, at least for me. It feels like an altar to an alien god. It, they really are impressive machines. In quantum mechanics, there's this concept that an, an, a, a thing can exist in two states which are mutually exclusive, at the same time, quote unquote. And I'm using those words because the English language was developed before we had concepts to describe what these things actually are doing. But I'm gonna give you a, a, a roundabout way of understanding this. Imagine that there really are parallel universes out there, and now imagine you have two that are exactly identical in every respect, all the way out to the horizon, as far as we can see, down to the last little atomic detail of every single thing with only one difference. And that's the value of a little thing called a qubit on this chip, which is a contraction of quantum bit. In a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus, a point in space where they overlap. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. So it seems mainstream science is getting a bit more sci-fi. Many leading scientists now believe that we live in a multiverse, a universe within something larger that has other universes in it. And to take it in another direction, many believe that there are parallel dimensions. So a parallel dimension would kind of be like this. When we used to sit in school as children and the teacher would put a transparency on the projector and they would project an image onto the board with the projector. 
Say that transparency had a boy bouncing a ball on the bottom left side of the screen. You put that on the projector and you will then see a boy on the bottom left side of the screen. Let's say you take another transparency and on the bottom right side there's a boy bouncing a ball and you stack that on the other one that's already existing. You will then see both of them existing on the one plane on the board at the same time. So continue that process. Multiple boys in multiple areas all stacked on top of each other on the one projector that's being projected onto the board and they're now all existing in the same plane, the same plane of existence, but they are not on the same dimension. So now bring forth all the movies and the TV that have been coming out lately with Doctor Strange where there's multiple dimensions and multiple realities all with you and I existing but different realities and different timelines where if it's a dimension that's very close to us, everything is very similar, albeit if I had a beauty mark here, it might be here now. And if we venture out further and further, the stranger things become. I could be a human being here, and I could be a squirrel here, and I could be a flaming heap of garbage that speaks German, and I'm the only thing in the universe, okay? Possibilities are endless. Infinity, it's endless. So here's our dimension. Infinite dimensions this way, infinite dimensions this way. There's also the very popular show that just came out, Stranger Things, where essentially they're promoting the idea that there is another dimension which is almost the polar opposite of ours called the Upside Down, which basically takes up the same space, but we're not on the same plane. We're not on the same dimension. And this newest one that's most apropos to this argument is The Discovery, the new Netflix movie, The Discovery, with Jason Siegel and Rooney Mara, where essentially scientists discover that there is no death. And upon death, you instantly pop into another timeline, the one that's right next to ours that's so similar, but it is not ours. So essentially, there is no death. There is just constant repetition and living in different timelines all doing, maybe you cross the street going left on this one and you cross the street going to the right. Maybe one you got hit by a car, maybe one you didn't. Maybe one you met a woman, you had a child, maybe one you did not. Maybe one you met the man of your dreams and in the other one you got crushed by a piano. Now the next topic is the Mandela effect. So the Mandela effect basically is people having these collective memories of things that are no longer the same. So basically where it came from was there was a group of people that believed Nelson Mandela died in the 80s and there was another group of people that clearly did not think that was the case because that's the reality we live in right now. Another excellent example of what the Mandela effect is is recall the old cartoon Snow White, the original Snow White. What does the evil queen say to the mirror? which is coincidentally a mirror is almost like peering into another opposite dimension. But regardless, what does that evil queen ask the mirror? Mirror, mirror on the wall, right? No. What the queen actually asks is, What wouldst thou know, my queen? Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? So what could be the reason that we're having these false memories, these false collective memories that are now, when you look back in the records, are not the same? In comes CERN. Okay, so in terms of keeping it short, I'm not going to play the whole video, but you get the gist here. It's a bunch of CERN workers and interns, uh, what most would call dancing, uh, but I use that term very loosely here. It looks like they're all trying to get an ice cube out of the back of their shirt or something, or they're seizing. Um, but it scares me that people working at CERN have this little rhythm. Anyway, you could see right here, all the workers or interns, whatever they are, are mimicking Shiva, clear as day. So there's one mimicking Shiva like the statue out front of CERN. Next, we are presented with an old gentleman busy at work behind his desk of papers with a poster board around his neck that says Mandela. Okay. To further the weirdness, the poster board behind that one says Bond 1. And if you Google Bond 1, the very first James Bond character to ever be portrayed on television was named Barry Nelson. So on this old gentleman's neck, you have two poster boards that basically read Nelson Mandela. Finally, we are brought to another intern doing his ice cube gyration in front of what looks to be a video game screen. And on the bottom left corner, it says 4664. Now, if you Google 4664, 
what do you think pops up? <laughs> Mandela International Day. So 4664 is a play on the numbers of the prison he was in and his days of incarceration. So 4664 is representative of Mandela International Day, devoted to Nelson Mandela and all his good deeds. CERN houses the LHC, which is the Large Hadron Collider, which is basically a particle accelerator under the ground that's in a ring shape. It fires single protons at each other at speeds we can't even imagine, and they collide, and they test and see what comes out of that, what subatomic particles are created, which ones come out of the ether and go right back. These things exist. This happens. This is what they're doing. Now, a lot of people say that they were trying to recreate the Big Bang in a controlled laboratory setting. What if they were successful in creating another Big Bang? So, therefore, um, if there are other universes, they're next to ours, and this actually relates to uh, my theory of the Mandela effect and how the particle accelerator altered the weight of one electron and therefore sh destroyed our universe and shifted us into the universe that's directly next to it, and therefore things are different in this universe. So you um, believe that this thing that some people call the Mandela effect is actually real? Oh, absolutely real. Can you describe what it is for people who have never heard it before? Sure. So the Mandela effect is uh, the effect of some people thought that Nelson Mandela died in a, at a certain time, and other people remember it as a different time. And this goes for a lot of other things, you know, uh, Star Wars, um, classic videos, mirror, mirror on the wall. Everybody knows that. Well, <laughs> well, if you actually look back to the original film, it's not mirror, mirror on the wall. It's it's magic mirror on the wall. And some people actually, which of course it's not. It's not in but, the reality I grew up in. Right. Exactly. Uh, and I mean, some people in this reality. I guess maybe didn't make it from our last reality, I'm thinking. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why they don't remember it, um, and some people do. But anyway, though, that is the Mandela effect, and we are living in an alternate expansion of our universes. Let's take Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, like an old film, animated film. How did it actually change? Well, it never changed. We changed. You see, we were moving relative to our universe, and then our our universe destroyed, so now the universe move, well, started to move, or I guess our parallel universes, our multiverse started to move parallel to us because we were out of alignment and that just destroyed everything. So technically, we so, didn't, I mean, the universe didn't change, we did. What happened was we made this universe sort of out of balance. And our universe. Because of the, the collider, the super collider? Yeah, we altered the weight of a single electron, which I believe shifted us into a parallel universe, considering that we caused a chain reaction that could have catastrophically destroyed our universe. I mean, even when we th thought about starting it, we thought our universe would implode. And then it didn't, and we're like, oh, it's okay. Well, maybe it did implode. We just instantly got shifted to another universe. When this universe was destroyed, then again, here's our progression of infinite expansion of parallel universes. And here's ours. When this one just destroyed itself, and as I said, there, there's an infinite number of parallel universes. That means there's an infinite possibility that everything contained within our infinite range happened, existed, will happen. For example, there's a reality where possibly... <laughs> Maybe this world didn't even occur. Maybe there's a reality where our universe instantly started and then destroyed itself. There's an infinite number of possibilities. So, universes that are right next to each other, and as I said, these are infinitely close yet infinitely far away from each other. We have our universes. And the farther away a universe is, the more different it is because of each individual event. When our universe was destroyed, over here. And this was, you think, when CERN Super Collider did its experiment? Large Hadron Collider, yeah. Or the, the, the Hadron? L Large Hadron Collider, Large, right. Okay. And, um, so after our universe and timeline was destroyed, we were, let's zoom this in a lot, zoom, 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 and the universe that's directly next to ours, it's just directly next to ours, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from form to form. So, 
if this one was eliminated, all the energy from this universe created or transferred a universe that was right next to us. So, so the, the original universe is um, <clears throat> mirror, mirror on the wall. The, right. the transferred to universe is magic mirror on the wall. Right, and even if you um, have quantum data or other things that possibly could help calculate these claims, then you'll find that there is a fluctuation pattern of which our universe is on a similar plane. So if this is our plane, there's a universe in this plane, which means that this is a larger dip and this is a smaller dip. So that way there's a fluctuation in our reality of actually things that are real, that are real to us but are different in other realities, and there's a consistent fluctuation. And I think this fluctuation is known as the Mandela effect for some things, and a lot of things are the same, but other things are, you know, very different. So in this universe, it's pretty much exactly, almost exactly the same as ours for the fact that we're all here, almost, and that everything that we see is pretty much the same. What do you mean almost? Almost as in, like, I don't know. There's an infinite number of possibilities, so there has to be at least an infinite possibility that somebody on this planet is gone from that time. Or maybe there is an infinite possibility that there is. But the point is, is that it's a parallel universe to ours. So it is not our universe. It is, it's not ours. But... So we are now not in the same universe that we were in when Mirror, Mirror on the Wall was a part of a film. Well, that's what I'm theorizing, yeah. So we're in a different universe. Exactly. Completely different universe. Say, say your name? Maxwell Lawhon. And you are a? Well, I'm a theoretical physicist. Of course. And you're how old? 13. There you go. Thank you, Max. Thank you. What if upon being fired up, the LHC, upon immediate collision of the particles, annihilated our entire universe, and we instantly popped into the one next to it? The one next to it that is almost identical in every way, shape, or form, but the minutia and the little tiny details of certain things have been changed inadvertently because it's the dimension that's close to ours, so it's a little bit different. That entire scenario is highly extraordinary and hard to believe. It's almost unbelievable. Let's take a trip to CERN where you will find a statue and that two meter tall statue is of the Hindu deity, Shiva. Shiva is one of the principal deities in Hinduism and is often called the god of creation, destruction, regeneration, and transformation. And to be more precise, Shiva is the supreme being who is in charge of creating protecting and transforming the universe. Not only is the statue of Shiva present at CERN, it's also doing a sacred dance called the Tandava, which is a dance believed to be the source of the cycle of creation, preservation, and destruction. So at the very epicenter, of where many are theorizing is the location that tore our universe apart and we popped into another one instantly, stands a statue of Shiva who is known as the destroyer but transformer of the universe. It's interesting.